Good day everyone, Russ Barkley here with another commentary on ADHD. Today we're going to talk about why we medicate for ADHD. After all, you've heard the rumors out there that medications might cause brain damage. Wrong. You have to take them intravenously or snort them up your nose for that to happen, much like drug abusers do, but taken as prescribed, there's no evidence of that. Or we have people saying that they're not all that effective. Well, we're going to examine that claim as well. And then some people say, well, there's the risk for increasing the likelihood of future drug use, particularly stimulants, and there is no evidence for that either. By the way, before we get started, have a look at the disclosure at the bottom of this slide. I do not currently receive any financial support from the drug industry, and I haven't for several years. And even then, I might receive, oh, $1,000 a year or so for educating people about ADHD. None of my presentations involved advocating for any specific type or brand of medication ever. So that said, let's take a look at why we medicate people for ADHD. First of all, the ADHD medications are the most effective treatments we have currently available for managing ADHD. They have the largest evidence base compared to any of the other treatments like psychosocial treatments, like CBT, like parent training. We have a substantial amount of evidence for their effectiveness. So first out of the gate, they are the most effective treatment that we have. Also, their safety is incredibly well established. Many of us have argued that they're among the safest drugs used in psychiatry for the treatment of various mental and neurodevelopmental disorders, and I happen to agree with that. So the safety profile for the medications is very good. Also, the response rate is better than we see for just about any other psychiatric medication. About 70 to 90 percent of clinical cases improve on the first medication that is started. Let's say that's about 75%. Try the different medications and different delivery systems, and that figure rises to 90% or more. So most people do show a positive response to these medications. Moreover, we find that 50 to 60% of clinical cases place within the normal range of behavior when taking these medications. So that's a very high rate of normalization, especially compared to other medications used in psychiatry. So a very good profile of effectiveness there as well. Also, relative to psychosocial treatments like psychotherapy, CBT, parent training, classroom management especially, these medications, this form of treatment, I should say, is very easy to administer, requiring the least amount of effort on the part of the client, as well as on the part of others who work with them, caregivers specifically, in assisting patients with ADHD. So very convenient. Taken usually once a day, sometimes twice a day, makes these very convenient medicines, as I've said. Psychosocial treatments also produce side effects, and I've talked about that in some of my other videos on this channel. And indeed, in 10 to 15 percent of cases, these side effects are significant and may result in people discontinuing that form of treatment. So it isn't just medications that produce side effects. We know they do, but a lot of people don't realize that all effective psychological therapies have side effects. And if they don't, well, then they're probably not very effective, certainly not more than placebo. So let's keep in mind that some people don't do well on things like CBT, parent training, classroom management, mindfulness meditation, and so on. And so we need to keep in mind that medications may actually be safer than some of these others, other treatments for certain individuals. The medications are also far less expensive to implement than are the psychosocial therapies when judged over the same span of time. Now, the fact that one might use medication for years 
and certainly would only use psychological therapies for a matter of weeks or months, medication might become equally as costly over the long run, but not during a fixed period of time. And that's because we stop psychological therapies after a while. The medications can be used for years, indeed, across the lifespan, through adulthood. So starting even in the preschool years, certainly in the elementary grades and onward, these medications can be used. There's no evidence of any age at which they stop working. There's a little bit of evidence that they work better after age five than below age five, but there's no marked difference in medication response as a result of age group. Now, for children, these medications can be active in settings where caregivers are not present. So when children are playing in the neighborhood, when people are driving, when teens are at the mall, uh, or just independent of their parents for any reason, these medications actively work to help control behavior, improve self-regulation, and so on. That cannot be said for psychological treatments, which only work when they're implemented, where they're implemented, and for whom they're implemented, that is, by whom. By that, I mean that if a teacher is using these in one class, then her use of behavioral techniques, let's say, isn't going to generalize to the rest of the school and certainly not to the home environment. So psychosocial treatments tend to be rather situation specific, and that is not true with medications. Finally, at least for the stimulants, there is the possibility, as I've spoken about in another video, that taking these medications for several years might, in a substantial minority of people with ADHD, improve brain growth in those brain regions that underlie ADHD. This is called neuroprotection in the literature. And as I talked about in my other video on the topic, we have more than 30 studies providing some evidence of improved neural growth in some people with ADHD after several years of medication treatment. So for all of these reasons, one might want to consider using medication for ADHD. Now, in my next video, I'm going to talk about why would you use psychosocial treatments for ADHD if medications are so effective. We'll address that later. But for now, thanks for joining me. This is Russ Barkley. I hope you found this useful and informative. And if you're not a subscriber, think about subscribing. If you like the channel, recommend us to others who might find this information useful. And as always, as I end my presentations, live well, be well, and take care. Thanks, everybody.